Are you frustrated because you've been drawing for a while now and you don't feel like you're improving? You've still got the same problems, the same issues with what you do. And you really thought that by now, you'd be able to do things in a way that if you're honest, you know you still can't. Here are five big reasons, each in 60 seconds, that cause this sort of roadblock in our drawing journey. But don't miss after the five points, because after that, I want to make clear the single underlying issue that underscores all of these five points and many other points as well that cause roadblocks in our drawing journey that stop us progressing the way we otherwise might. And that is pure gold. But it will make more sense after these five points in 60 seconds each. And the first is, are you a sucker for the top tip videos? The quick shortcut thumbnails, the don't be a mug, leapfrog to the end slogans. The simple truth is there is no magic wand in learning to draw. There is no trick that the masters are keeping secret to stop you from walking into your artistic destiny. There is no conspiracy. And if I made a video for say, piano beginners and called it, play a Beethoven concerto in just 10 minutes with these five tips, four hacks, and a shortcut. You wouldn't believe it. Nobody would believe it. If you're learning the piano, you can't play a Beethoven concerto for a long time. It's practice and hard work. Well, why in learning to draw are we so ready to believe there is? Do you believe that learning to draw is any less of a skill than learning to draw the piano? If you do, that's your problem. Sorry, we need to wake up from our dreams of easy shortcuts and embrace reality if we want to see drawing improvement. Enthusiasm is a great motivator, and when we learn to draw, we certainly want to have it. But it can lead us astray. When we start to learn to draw, we usually have particular subjects that we already really like. And so when we learn to draw, it's natural that we want to draw the things that we already enjoy, whether it's portraits or horses or buildings or flowers and we want to capture all the things we love about these things. The problem is because of our enthusiasm, our energy for our subject, we want to capture them well. We want to capture the drama, the complexity, all the visual possibilities. And this so often leads us to go too fast, too quickly in terms of the complexity. And the simple test of if we're doing this or not is, am I consistently doing my drawings well or not? If I'm not, then I'm trying to do too much too quickly and I need to pull back and simplify because if I keep attempting subjects that are beyond me, I will get practice at drawing badly and establish poor drawing habits. Point number three is I have an inconsistent approach in my drawing. And I mean inconsistent in the widest possible number of possibilities. I may be inconsistent in what I use to draw with, whether it's pen or pencil or charcoal or pastel, whatever. I may be inconsistent in, say, the size of drawing I try to do. I may be inconsistent in the time I give myself and therefore the sorts of pressures that are on me when I do draw. I might be inconsistent in the videos that I watch to learn to draw or other teaching material I use. I may not even be aware that various videos from different creators may be advocating totally inconsistent ways of thinking and practicing drawing. And therefore they end up confusing what I'm doing without me being aware even that that's what's happening. I need to be consistent so that I can establish foundations and build on them at the start. And this next point is the total opposite. And it won't be applicable to the people the last point was applicable to but it will have an audience. And that's, have I fallen into too much of a routine, into too much of a rut, into doing too many things the same? Which wouldn't be a problem, quite frankly, if I was happy with my drawing, my drawing development, my improvement. But if I feel I'm not improving, if I feel I've got the same weaknesses, then clearly there is something about the way I'm doing things that's not working because it's not taking me where I want to go. So I need to change things up. Maybe I need to find one video teacher and stick with them so there's consistency 
in one direction. Maybe I need to change the size drawing that I do. Maybe I need to change the sorts of things I draw. Maybe I need to change the time limit that I draw for. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If I'm not happy with what I'm getting, I need to change somehow what I'm doing. And the fifth reason before I pull all this together in the underlying issue, I believe, is that for some reason when we sit down to draw right from the beginning, we think that at the end of our drawing session, we're going to have an artwork looking at us. And it's simply not true. When I sit down to learn the piano, after my first, second, third, fourth, tenth, twentieth lesson, I'm not going to call the neighbours in to give a concert. When I'm learning to draw, I'm not going to have an artwork at the end. I'm going to have what you have at the end when you learn to draw, when you do drawing exercises, when you're learning various components, when you're basically falling over and learning to get up again. And this doesn't give us artworks, whatever we might think that word means. But the mentality that I'm going to have an artwork at the end is extremely unhelpful if I'm actually still learning to draw. And it will cause all sorts of bad habits that constrict our ability to learn and to develop. And if I'm not improving in my drawing, it could be I've constrained my ability to learn by the pressure of having an artwork at the end. And if you're finding these interesting, please help me out and hit the like button for me. I'd also love to hear any other points you think are holding back your drawing improvement in the comments. They're not just helpful for me, perhaps for future videos, but they can be helpful for people reading them as well. Well, what's the underlying point for all of these five individual points and for many others? I think it's that when we start to learn to draw for some reason, we don't appreciate that learning to draw is in many, many ways exactly the same as learning to do any skill at all, whether it's speaking French, whether it's using a chainsaw, whether it's playing football, learning the violin, wood carving, or writing poetry, it doesn't matter. There's not anything special about drawing that somehow means that for some people, they can just do it easily, or that for everyone, there's some secret easy way that if you can find out, if you can get someone to tell you, it all falls into place quickly. Learning by definition is a process and processes always take time and not just time but input of energy and processes can usually be done well or can be done less well or out and out badly. In teacher training, teachers don't learn their subject matter. I mean at some point they have to learn it but that's not the focus of their teacher training. In teacher training, we learn to understand the learning process. We learn to understand how we learn and therefore how we should teach effective ways of teaching. The content isn't really important. The content's interchangeable. It's why teachers can swap subject departments because it's not the subject matter, but it's understanding the learning process and therefore the way to work in with that, with how we teach. And there's a little bit of class control thrown in as well. Which is why it can be such a challenge for the self-taught artist, because we may not be aware that we actually have to learn to learn as well as learn to draw. And I may therefore choose resources, particularly videos, and ways of drawing that in my mind produce a result that I'm happy with at that point, or mostly happy with, but I may not be learning. I may not be able to go from there to a higher level of skill. In fact, I may not have even developed the skills I'm wanting to develop with what I've done, but I don't realize that because I don't know enough about how we learn and then how we learn drawing to appreciate that what I've done hasn't taken me there. This is why I think when we copy other artists' drawings, we can end up with quite a good looking drawing and we feel like we've come a long way. And yet we really haven't learned any of the skills that we need to do our own drawing 
because we haven't learnt the thought processes that that original artist had to develop as part of their learning to draw. And so when we go to draw something that's original, where we can't copy the lines that someone else has worked out where to put, we don't know where to start, but we're confused because we've just done this nice looking drawing. But the point is, we didn't actually draw this, we copied it. It's a different skill. And so there are all these things such as this that can confuse us, mislead us and discourage us. Let me say for anyone who is frustrated with their process of learning to draw, that just as anyone can improve in any skill, so you can improve in this skill, in the skill of drawing. So don't give up, persevere, make changes that may need to be made, do things differently that might help if they're done differently and realize that as a self-taught artist, you have to be your own teacher as well as the student and therefore need to have some sense, some awareness of what it means to learn, how we learn so that you can engage with that process as profitably as you can and go as far as you can for the time and energy that you put into it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I really hope this has been helpful for anyone discouraged about not being able to improve, not being able to push through a certain level with their drawing. Can I just give a plug and say that I think my channel has a wealth of material for helping learn to draw, but particularly a playlist of tips for the self-taught artists, which really is videos such as this. Not so much how to draw this or that, not technical skills, but the big picture, learning to draw process issues that I think in the end are more important than how to draw a straight line. But look, whatever you draw, straight lines or not, and however they're turning out, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.